Hello, so I've been pushing a ton of code out these past few weeks and I'm going to take you through a lot of that today. I've been revamping my product, need to finish up Stripe integration and do a few other code polishings. Here we go. I'm going to be working in a cafe today because it might just be me, but I feel like the spot that you work in at home kind of gets old. It's also when you don't really have anybody else around, it gets lonely, but also you get, you tend to doom scroll a lot more. So I'm going to try to work in a co-working space to have other people around me and try to be more productive. I actually got rejected from ODF. Uh, I talked about the interview a few days ago, maybe in the last video. We had the call, we pretty much talked about my background, what I've been doing for the past six months, what I plan on doing for the next six months, and how I would deal with failure, just things about my vision. And got the email shortly after that I had not been selected. One of those things where it's, you just have to push through the, the failure as a founder, you're going to encounter a lot of failure. And so it's just part of the process. Maybe one of the learnings that I take from this call is he really emphasized what failure would mean for me in the next six months. Just thinking about what I would do wrong in the next six months and how I would try to anticipate that. But again, really my focus is just to launch fast as possible, heading to a cafe to try to get more work done, ultimately get the Stripe integration. It's kind of the last barrier I have because you have to take payments for your business. Otherwise, it's not really a business. Once I do that, I am going to release it in a private, very small private beta, make sure nothing is breaking too bad and try for a mass release on a bunch of different platforms like Product Hunt, X, YouTube, Reddit. I think marketing is huge when you work on your startup. Some guy on X, he just like really went ham for his marketing in 24 hours, got a few, few paying customers right off the bat, thousands of users, it was crazy. And so I'm gonna be focusing on marketing as well, but gonna, gonna be going to this cafe almost here. And so I'll take you through some of the code that I've been working on. Okay, I just came back from the cafe. That music was so loud and the sound of the coffee machines brewing and steaming the milk was just so distracting. I decided to just come back and work at home. So I'm, I'm gonna take a bit of a break from coding just because I keep running into bugs. One of the things I wanna talk about is why Stripe? Why not Lemon Squeezy, Paddle, or any of the other alternatives? Well, frankly, Lemon Squeezy is owned by Stripe. That's number one. But Stripe is kind of the go-to for payment processing in the industry specifically. It supposedly has the easiest integration and it's so big that you almost wanna use it just because it's, it's such an established service. And so for the first pass, I'm gonna use that. I've heard mixed things about it in terms of customer service, disputes, not getting processed properly. It heavily favors the customer. But for the very first iteration, I care about speed a lot more than reliability for these things. And so I'm gonna just go with Stripe. And from my understanding, I tried implementing this using AI tools, but I think you should not use AI tools and just read the docs because it, it's pretty horrendous to try to rely on like ChatGPT to actually integrate payments. From my experience, maybe I need to use a different code editor, but I would just look through the dots, read through them, and try to understand it before you actually use AI. Kind of the flow is you have a user, you know, check out. That opens a session to your, your product. You have to call Stripe, initiate that checkout. Stripe will send you via a webhook a response back. And so the concept of these webhooks are kind of the backbone of Stripe integration. You have to make sure that the integration with your product is iron tight because there is over you know, 200 plus events that you have to account for. Of course, you're really only gonna care about a select few of those events, like checkout session completed, but there's, there's a lot of handling and synchronization that needs to happen with, your, with Stripe because Stripe is kind of the source of truth for where the customer is in the, the payment flow, right? So to be specific, right, the state of the customer transaction lives in Stripe right here. You want this sync of customer IDs to your database because the source of truth is Stripe. Every time they call back into your webhook, the information can change, the state of the transaction can change. And they do advertise a very simple integration, but there are a lot of gotchas in this process. I'm sure I'm gonna run into a lot of different problems as I work on this. So bear with me and I'm going to 
just keep chugging along the code, see what issues I run into, but I think I should be able to get it done today. Like one of the things I wanted to talk about is the strike trigger events. And so in order to simulate this locally with your local build, you, you can run the strike trigger and then the type of event that you're simulating that will call your webhook endpoint. But you don't need to do that. You just have to listen for the Stripe events, log into Stripe, and then you can check out through your, your front end. And I feel like that's not really made clear in the, the docs because they're saying, how do you test locally? You can test locally by running some listener locally and then using the CLI to send webhook events. You can also send webhook events to your local machine through your front end UI and your integration there. You don't need to use the CLI. And so I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that should be more emphasized in the document as opposed to them kind of advertising the CLI when doing integration. And so once I get everything out, I'm gonna to try to like package this code and put it onto GitHub. It might not be 100% correct, but as I work on it over time, I'm sure it'll get better and better. So I think I got it to work. All right, so let's let's take a look here, right? We got we got the pricing page. You know, if we cancel the subscription, little, little UI bug, maybe I just need to refresh, but when you refresh, you have the current plan. And when you go to buy one of the plans, Say we filled out all the information here, we press subscribe, it processes in Stripe, sends a webhook to my backend, we go back to the billing page and we see that the current plan is, is uh, selected. And so, so the thing kind of works. I need to polish the edges a little bit, but that's pretty much the, the Stripe integration. Maybe it'll take a day for you to implement, maybe even faster, depending on how familiar you are with the whole thing. And so would definitely not push it off because once you have Stripe integration, you have that like one click checkout available, it's super easy to take payments. And even if you just set up the Stripe account, you can manually send links to your customers to just fill out and they'll set, and you can manage the subscriptions on the Stripe portal manually. But that's pretty much the main objective I wanted to get done today. And we'll see, I'll do a little bit of polishing and then I'm gonna to release to a preview environment, right? You have your local dev environment and then your production environment at the very top try to get things kind of working in the preview environment. And once everything doesn't break, then I'm gonna just push it out to production. So I'll, I'll try to keep you all in the loop, but if the video ends here, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.